Now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am The League Dad, and as always, joined by my awesome co-hosts, we've got Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. And uh, it's been a little bit longer since the last time we put an episode by a day because uh, of all the games that have been happening. So uh, we wanted to record it uh, uh, after all of the play and stuff happened. Uh, but I mean, I was excited, even if even if it is just the play, it's like at least it's worlds, right? It's it's the beginning of, of everything. But uh, overall, without getting into too much specifics, just how are your thoughts? I know first day had so many hiccups and that was kind of a downer uh, with all the delays, but Overall, what were your thoughts on play-ins? Uh, does your minds change at all about format? You know, we were complaining about that. <laughs> uh, or did you generally enjoy, you know, getting to see uh, these teams play? Overall thoughts, thought was probably the second most exciting play-ins I think I've watched. The first one being the time Matt Lions lost to Turkey, which is even <laughs> more hilarious. I will, uh, I'm not going to get too much into the individual results, but yeah, I think that was great. Um, the first day delays was atrocious. Format does not excuse, like, even if the games are good despite the format, doesn't mean the format's good. So that's how I feel about that. And then it's super surprising that Turkey was 0 5. Like, I actually was thinking, like, this was the team that used to, like, sometimes make it into the main stage. And now they've just, like, completely regressed with the old team that generally qualifies. It's them and Fenerbahce. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a lot of fun watching the games, uh, especially because, honestly, it wasn't as one-sided for... I was p pleasantly surprised by, you know, the quality of some of these games, aside from, like, some teams. Like, watching Loud was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll get to that later, obviously. Oh, yeah. But uh, had a lot of fun with that. I was actually very surprised to see DFM kind of smack around RNG. Um, and I'm also glad to see that one Fnatic was able to play uh, with uh, upset for most of it. I don't know if that's continuing. I can't remember what was said. And DRX is not a pushover. They went 5-0. So pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, I thought it was cool. Um, I think I'm, I was really glad that Fnatic was able to play with their at least their ADC. And their, their sub-support Rux actually had a pretty good showing. Uh, I mean, even though EG lost to Fnatic, which I was bummed, like, I never wanted to beat Fnatic with a bunch of subs anyways, so who cares? Uh, yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, EG, I think, played really well, and I think Jat, he had a really good little speech during the tiebreakers where, you know, a lot of people are giving, like, Fnatic and RNG and um, EG flack for losing to wildcard teams, but that's actually how it goes almost every year. It's always close. It always goes down to the wire. Uh, we always drop games, and we always have several games that are close. Um, I mean, NA, EU, we're still a cut above the wildcard regions, but, like, they're still good teams. Wildcards are definitely still legit, so we saw some pretty high-quality games um, from what we could expect. And, yeah, it was actually pretty fun, I would say. Format still sucks, though. Format yeah. definitely still sucks. Yeah. I mean, best of ones are just kind of like, meh, you know? <laughs> but yeah. it's, it was fun still to to watch, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would say the same thing. I think generally the games were fun to watch. And I, I love that there was personality showing. Like you alluded to it uh, a little bit, Alistair, but Loud was very fun to watch. I think we mentioned this before in the podcast. Like you don't have to have the best teams to have a popular fan base like or a popular you know, region base. Like, Because I know they're really into their league scene. Uh, we saw it, uh, you know, with uh, what's their ADC's name again? I can't remember. Um, Brands. Yeah, Brands with his yeah. arm and showing the, the <laughs> bot diff. I mean, th that's the stuff that you love to see, right? And if you're going to go down, go down swinging. And they were kind of like their personality kind of reflected in their team play. It's kind of like go big or go home. You know what I'm saying? Whether whether it does well or uh, it doesn't happen at all. But yeah, generally, I think it was it was great. I think, I mean, should we just get right into it? Because the most important thing that happened was NA is greater than EU, right? I mean, that's, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's really what we came here to say in this episode, really, is that uh, EG, honestly, surprising me. Uh, I didn't expect that. Maybe you guys saw something that I didn't. I, I was a little worried, especially, you know, uh, seeing some of the games before that. But what did you guys think of their performance uh, overall? Uh, and then, of course, uh, making it through to the group stage. Yeah, I mean, okay, so this was on Twitter, but I think Dom posted something like 
There's this stat, it's like 1,300 days since the last EU versus NA best of five or whatever. Yeah. And now it's 1,300 plus days since the last time EU beat NA in a best of five and one day since NA beat EU. So, you know, <laughs> I, woo, I was ecstatic. Um, I thought, I think I voted EG to win. Um, Same. Just because like we could vote the day before the event, uh, before the tiebreaker. And I was like, okay, I think EG's looking decent. Like, I think Kauri actually looked a lot better than I expected. Uh, considering I thought his pass was a little shaky. And then Maz just looked kind of out of shorts. But I didn't think it was going to be a 3-0. Dude, that was that was an amazing yeah. event. Like, you saw Mad Lions tilting in real time. Inspired, like, at the end, he was like, what's up about it? Like, at Armit and stuff, when they were walking off after the 3-0, it was beautiful. And people were like, why is he being BM? I'm like, come on, guys. Let us have this one. We, yeah. We've been waiting at, for this for so long. So, yeah. yeah. I think that was an excellent thing i'm not gonna go too long i just i had a blast i was so yeah. happy and they needed this on na soil a team that wasn't cloud night won a best of five Hell like yeah. that, that's actually kind of a rare sight if you think about it <laughs> honestly for me i'm just i i'm here for the memes mad lions <laughs> play-ins baby it's, oh that, that's, it's that's all <laughs> <laughs> like that, that that's only, only major region team to lose play-ins twice now as well as yeah. the first the only team to lose it once. <laughs> yeah, I mean, other than that, I do feel bad for Unforgiven. He had he played really, really well, but the rest of his team was just was not there. And I actually kind of think Kauri didn't play that great. I think he just had like his team really picked up on his slack. I don't think he played egregiously by any means, but Unforgiven was by far the better player in this series. But it just kind of didn't really matter because all the other four roles were just better. That being said, EG did play very well as a team, so props to them. Glad they made it out. Also, a bit of a shame that Fnatic also made it out, so we couldn't get the uh, EG into Group B. But yeah, yeah we'll we'll, we'll take we'll take what we can we'll take. take it. Yeah, yeah. I I thought um, Unforgiven he played well, but he kind of uh, in game two. I felt like when he got invaded on and lost his flash, I felt like that kind of lost almost the game for them because. Um, you're a Draven, and you can't push up because you have no flash level 1. I also thought in game 1, too, when they had that level 1 trade uh, with um, it was Draven Leona or something against uh, the Varus Tom Kench, they also burned all their sums, and then uh, Kauri got to keep his sums. And I felt like that was really snowballed against the Draven because, uh, you know, you have to snowball the Draven and get him a bunch of kills and get him lane prio and stuff, and I felt like their bot lane kept losing their summoners super early on into the series. Um, so I, it, it does kind of suck, but it's also like when you see that and you're an EG fan, it's like, oh, it's, it's free. Draven, no flash, level one, let's go. Uh, so that was pretty cool. I did think Kauri also played pretty... He, he was playing like very aggressively and he was like trying to make the plays, but I did feel like mechanically, especially like on Aphelios, things were just a little bit awkward. <laughs> like um, I felt like he was canceling some autos here and there, right? Or like, especially in the Varus game one, he was just kind of walking up and dying a lot. Um, but to be fair, I do think that he was always just in a position to do damage. And if he died, like the Tom Kench was there to save the jo like JoJo on Victor. So he was like just bait, I guess. He built Shield Bow. Um, so Kauri, I think he, he's playing better and better. And he's like more and more just like, I'm there with the team. And I'm glad he's not a KDA player because that would be, I think, the worst thing to have in like a sub ADC is just I'm just gonna try not die and like try to yeah, farm up sure. and like carry. Like he's just there with the team and he's like, if I die, you know, JoJo will carry the the team fight on Victor or something. So I, I do like the direction EG is going a lot. They're actually really exciting. And oh my god, dude, I gotta say, inspired in game one when he did the 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 maokai w into flash smite it was so fast i didn't even realize that he had stolen that that baron Dude, I, I that was like either yeah that was series defining that was like what the hell just happened i can't believe he stole that that was like the smallest of margins and i swear to god mad was so tilted after that yeah. i mean Elio was... was tilted already bro <laughs> oh my god dude that was just like that was an un real steal like that's just unlucky as hell man so that, that was a pretty there's just so many crazy moments in that series i think el yoyo actually played pretty well and i didn't say kauri played well well i just think he played better than i expected considering oh, for sure he didn't play well in playoffs i will yeah. say he did win game three there was the renata ult that 
pretty much like turned it all against yeah. them and then he just landed a really good inferno ball like a, it almost felt like a pre-nerf inferno ball i was like oh wow this isn't yeah, actually that good. bad and then the the game where kaiser just ran it down into his, yeah uh, his, that's how the dude, game ends, bro. bro that is that's some bronze elo shit i was like what are you <laughs> doing kaiser dude that turret is op man i hate that i thing. mean sure but he took all those people like it I shoots mean, it's, you once and you stop walking toward it. I mean, it's I mean, really you can, simple. You can walk into it and not get hit by it if you do it properly. And no. Kaiser should be able to do it on zero ping. I, that that's that. just him not paying attention. <laughs> that that's all that is. How how it goes with me is I walk up to it. And I'm like, why isn't it? Why can't I click it? And I get too close to it, and then it kills me. <laughs> and then I all try to click time. it. Yeah, I'm like, fuck, man. I just maybe I that's what he was doing. Like, <laughs> I, it's it's all like he was even hidden in a, in a bush. Like he just wa yeah. blatantly walked into it, brain off, and died. Like, yeah, yeah. So what I wanted Definitely. to bring up though is, what do you guys think this means for Danny's career? On EG specifically, I, not yeah, not if overall. You bring, if EG. you were gonna bring it up, I was I was gonna bring it up because I think. Um, yeah, I've been seeing stuff on Twitter. I know our boy Kimmer uh, is getting into it on, <laughs> on Twitter, but I, I do think there's, you know, a validity to both sides of the argument, right? So, uh, if you guys haven't seen it or, or know what we're talking about, really, like it's kind of like this question again that Danny's not even here, possibly at or at Worlds, or you know, the fact that okay, um, we get it, you know, sit out and take your mental health break, but like this is a time where. If anything, the team kind of needs you. Like, it's Worlds. It's in NA. Like, this is the big opportunity. Your team kind of needs you. And again, Cowrie, for all the mistakes he's made, he's the sub. Like, you know, his the expectations, like, he is holding his own. And, and you know, yes, we wish he would be better. But the fact that he's just coming in last moment, having to gel with four new players, that, that says a lot. But going back to what Kevin was saying, yeah, what do you guys think um, – about Danny, like I get mental health, but at what point do you say you're also a professional athlete? Uh, you're also like getting paid a ton of money, uh, which is why you you get these high pressure situations. So again, just kind of revisiting that. What are your thoughts? So my thoughts, at least, were that he'll probably return to EG only because Kauri, unless he still levels up in group stage, isn't there yet. He's like not close to the realm that Danny was just hitting in his first year. Um, what I will say is that if Danny ever does want to take a break, though, again, or anything happens like that, I think he's going to go the way of Ole, where he's, like, had a really good split. Ole won two splits in a row on Liquid and then disappeared off to Academy and then into Golden Guardians afterward. Like, I think any pro sport, if you take hiatuses long enough when it really matters, uh, even if it's not spoken, people are going to people on these teams are going to be judgmental. They're going to be like, can I trust you to show up? Personally, as a fan, I hope that he becomes a superstar, like he is a superstar, but I hope he continues to be one and be go the way of JoJo Pan, right? But I feel like behind the scenes, if I were under EG shoes, if they didn't qualify here, I think Danny would have actually had his career hurt, even though he didn't play, right? Yeah. Be because he didn't play. So those are my initial thoughts. Honestly, I'm not fully sure what to think. I don't think he'll be affected that much, because um, I think he'll, st he'll still have another chance. But if it happens again, then there's definitely going to be issues. Um, I definitely think he's going to stay on EG. Honestly, I would be surprised if the roster changed at all this coming year. But he he does. It is getting to the point where he he needs to come back in because I, I obviously mental health issues like that happens to everyone, and sometimes you do need a break. But at the same time, like your professional athlete they all go through this all the time we mentioned it last time with double lift and his parents like the man still played the next day or that weekend or something like that like sometimes just gotta step forward yeah i think it's uh it's a tough situation for danny uh if i'm being honest like he's there's like a zero percent chance he's coming in for for worlds at all like he's not playing this year i don't think at all um it would be such a massive throw for EG to just randomly <laughs> start scrimming with uh, Danny. Uh, like, and from what I know, he hasn't been scrimming at all like with them. So I think Calry is our ADC for this year. And for next year, honestly, yeah, it's too hard to tell because so many roster decisions are made post-Worlds. And a lot of them are very heavily influenced by how well they do at Worlds. So 
I mean, I think EG's roster is still up in the air. Like, if they bomb out and go 0-6 in groups, still, then this roster could very easily blow up. Inspired could get tilted and go back to EU, right? Inspired has been very tilted in a lot of interviews and saying some weird stuff. So I think, honestly, EG's roster mostly depends on what he does rather than what Danny does. And... Like, it's going to be like if, if Inspired stays, if, if JoJo stays, if Impact stays, right? And they're going to be like, hey, we like Kauri. We think he could become better. It's going to be a lot of up to that stuff, right? Like, what players decide to stay on EG, and then what do they want? Because um, I can imagine, like, if you're a teammate of EG, you probably love Danny, but you're also, you don't want a teammate like that. Especially when you have Kauri, who maybe they work really well with him. I don't know. They're playing pretty well. Um they played pretty well yesterday, so it's going to be tough. Um, Danny, I mean, he'll, it, it, he'll probably find a team at the bare minimum next year. He'll, like, bare minimum, he'll find a team. Someone will pay him money to play ADC for him. So we'll probably see him if he still wants to play. But honestly, my hopes are not high that he's going to be on EG next year just because it, it just, dep- like, I don't know. Like, I, it just depends on how the roster shakes up for EG the, at the end of this year. It's going to be very dependent. On yeah. stage. So, I think yeah. uh, that's the thing. Like, I definitely empathize, right? But at the same point, like, what, how long, right? And again, we're not like, you're in worlds now. You know what I mean? It's like, this is the big stage. This is what you get paid big money to do. Can you imagine, like, okay, I get it, LeBron, some high paid superstar athlete, right? They take mental breaks. But if it's the championship, you're playing. Like, it's got to be something to like the thousandth degree that you know prevents you from playing because that is just the time to play and uh i i I have to agree with you mitchell i don't think he's coming back in that that there's no way they try to incorporate him back into the chemistry that they have right now even if cowry is you know not to the level uh, as some of the other adcs um but i just i i feel for danny but at the same time this is not fair to his team and i think uh kevin you had mentioned this a couple episodes maybe ago uh just this is something that like mental health is going to have to be a consideration i think when people you know evaluate do we want this person to be a player for us because it's just like basketball if we're treating mental health uh mental health just like physical health which it is right take care of your your mind and body then when you're signing players that's always what you're looking at are they injury prone like what's their track record been on injury like i think danny has kind of set the precedent now like okay if this is a thing and i can have a superstar player you know take breaks for mental health then that's fine but i need to take that in consideration and uh i think that's just the thing that we're gonna see now in in esports is is uh, yeah the consideration for mental health we're gonna see it but also you have to be careful right don't take too much consideration because actually if we think back double lift right he took a break for a split, and TSM, Reginald, very clearly was upset about that. They got Wild Turtle for a split, and then Double came back 2017 summer. They won again, went to Worlds, went 3-3 again, didn't get out of groups, right? And um, Double Double got kicked literally the next year, and it was almost sounded like because Double Oof took a break, and then they got Zven and Mithy, right? And obviously that was TSM's one of the TSM's biggest mistake ever. Any yeah. team's biggest mistake is letting go of double lift. So I'm not saying Danny's double lift, right? But like, you know, don't make a stupid choice because you think they might take a break or you think they might have some mental health struggles when they're still the best player for your team, maybe. So that that's something I would like to say is that this has backfired in the past for teams when they look too much into the stuff and they're like Wait, but they were just a good player, though. Maybe we should have just worked around their weird stuff instead. Um, yeah, so yeah, you make a really I think good that point. Could be the, yeah. yeah, I think that could be the case for Danny, right? Like, there's a world where Inspired and Impact are asking for all mm-hmm. these things. Their team's asking for all these things. It's really blowing up in Danny's mental, right? But, like, what if there was a world where everybody just revolved around Danny instead and be like, maybe we shouldn't be so crazy, so toxic, talking in interviews about our terrible champion pool, right? And work around Danny. And who knows? This team could have been so much different. It could have been maybe better. They could have won the championship. That's how they won last split, right? Playing around Danny. Um, Because this new style, I mean, it's very top side heavy, right? Like Impact and JoJo are the main carries right now. And yeah, it's interesting to see how the world could have developed for EG. But yeah. And I I, I also think you're right. But with the moves, like Inspired is the key piece, right? And I know he gets tilted, but I think... You know, he did say about Jojo Pion that he he's the next caps, right? Like, 
Uh, I think <laughs> if he is got, if he has a tight enough bond and synergy with Jojo, I think that'll be enough for a mistake because Jojo is looking very promising. Like I am really excited for his growth, so like seeing his growth, seeing his skill increase and his attitude, man. I love his attitude. It is so, he has made a really, he's made it an art, this art of trash talking. Like he's so good at it. And I, I just, I don't know if he's coming up with it himself, but whoever it is, like, it's just, it's really good. It keeps me, keeps me entertained. And the fact that he's, he's good and backs it up is, is pretty cool. Like he was like the highest DPM on their team for that series. Uh, but Inspired also played super well uh, and just setting up his teammates. Uh, talk a little bit more about JoJo and Inspired and uh, their performance and you know how, how good you think they are. Um, I think Inspired had some... Well, in the best of the five, did really well. But uh, I think throughout the group stage, it was kind of hit or miss, just depending on like how the early game went, kind of went his mental, was my very simplified view of it. I think JoJo also had some very funny flashes on LeBlanc or blinking back and then dying randomly. But God bless Jojo. His his yeah. gameplay on like he picked set and just like started, you know, so doing uh, the sit up animation in lane, emoting all the time, just <laughs> completely chatting. Like they, I like that the caster shared some of the in-game chat that they were saying. He was just saying like, <laughs> he was just saying, I, I think he said XD after um, Niski, on Silas took the set all tried to do the set play and then Jojo was like what are you doing and he just set ults him and kills him and he's just like XD like dude it's so funny I like unironically I think he him and then the inspired flash steal like got them the mental edge mm, like yeah. this guy has the attitude he has the raw skill you know he's still not he still makes a lot of dumb yeah, plays, he does, but yeah. he makes some like giga chat plays too. Like when he was one v four zoning them out around Harold. Oh yeah. While his team was killing the other person, and they just ran away. I'm like, dude, I I, I could like hear the American fighter just flying over the arena. I could just <laughs> hear the fireworks. Fireworks. <laughs> you can that was that was some. <laughs> I mean, technically he's Canadian, but you know we'll we'll ignore we'll that. He's, yeah, he's, that's fine. <laughs> He's do he's do he did really well. This is his first worlds, and a lot of times, like our best players, right? Like our our like Bjergsen was a god in his first split of NA or first two years or three years at least, right? Double F was a god for so long, but like when they go to worlds, it's just a different beast. And JoJo is just like, I don't care. Yeah. I don't know who Niski is. Yeah, and like yeah. I don't know who these you are. So I hope he keeps it up in group stages. I mean that that sums it up mainly for me. What? Yeah, yeah. Jojo's crazy. He's correct. He's um, yeah, <laughs> um, he's going to a very hard group. So we'll see if the trash talk continues. <laughs> but uh, you know, he got a lot of good ones out in play-ins. He got a he got some good ones against Niski, right? Niski was considered one of the best mid laners to come to NA back in 2020. Um, so I mean, it's cool, right? I, I think it worked, though. I think, like, it's when it comes to, like, real game strategy, tilting your opponent is a real thing. We've talked so much yeah. about mental health, mental oh, struggles, yeah. mental, like, state before the game. Yo, Niski actually was running it down so hard. Like, really, really hard. And I wouldn't, I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't be surprised if he's been tilted since that clip hit Reddit of JoJo solo killing him and then, like, typing NA greater than EU and stuff. Like... It's felt like JoJo's had Niski's numbers since all the way back then oh, before Worlds yeah. even started in Champs Q. And now the now Mad Lions' run is over and JoJo and Inspired are just sending off toxic interview after toxic interview and like trash talking. It is pretty exciting. Um I will say about Inspired, I think the sentiment is starting to grow for both NA and EU that they, they kind of just they don't like what he says. Like, he is trash-talking both EU and NA at the same time. He said, like, one of the most crazy things, which is, like, I hate that Worlds is in NA because the solo queue is so bad. I'm just like, dude, yeah, that is a wild take. <laughs> you hate that Worlds is in NA. The region that you're playing for is it's a little extreme. So, I mean, Inspired is, like, 22. So I think he's just, like shooting from the hip, saying random stuff in interviews and stuff. A little bit of double if vibes, right? Double if has been caught saying some pretty sus, terrible stuff and then like backwalking it later. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Inspired, like they're living up to the live evil memes, but like I don't think you're supposed to get your own region to hate you. 
not yet yeah. at least. Like just just hate on EU. Don't stop hating on EU. But maybe with NA, chill out a bit because it's getting a little much. Um, yeah, I don't know. So it, it's just like the, these are the things that lead me to think Inspired's not going to stay. <laughs> mm, okay. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Where would he go to after trashing EU as well the whole time? I have no idea, man. He's I just know, trashing right? literally everybody. <laughs> it's like he's going to Brazil. Uh, he's going to go to Brazil, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, you'll. Yeah. He'll get I mean, more Cro- views. Croc is being pulled back for military service in Korea, so that would be the true. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh my goodness! Wait, can, I just wanted to talk about the Loud versus EG game where EG played Mordekaiser. Okay, Mordekaiser is got to be one of the most booty champions. Like he doesn't do anything except ult you, right? He's just a worthless champion without ulti. Okay, with ulti he's pretty good, but like otherwise he just walks up to you and he's a full skill shot champion, um, and he's super easy to not die to in lane. But loud, they just run in one v two and die to him, like missing everything, having no HP, and Mordekaiser just like doesn't do much. He just Qs, E's, autos. They both die, and I was like, all right, if that's how you know you're gonna play Mord, play in some Mord. I guess it's a really good pick. It's like it's the most OP pick. I really felt like loud in the tiebreaker. They really, um, fortunately, were choking very hard. I felt like they played a lot better. Uh, in the previous play-in games, and then it got to the tiebreaker moment. It got really serious, and they started just running it down. I mean, 0-8 and 4 for the Sejuani is just really bad. Um, but I do think Loud, though, they actually played pretty darn well up until that tiebreaker. So, you know, yeah. hope to see them in a future event. But yeah, guys, Mord is not that good, okay? If you can mind control your team, your opponents, you can play another champion and mind control them too, right? So, yeah. I, I personally think this is a callback to anyone who's been playing League for a while. I thought it was the whole Brazilian Mordekaiser meme the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Where yeah. It, it's like a Brazilian <laughs> Mordekaiser number one, hui, 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 like that shit. Yeah. I was, when I saw a lockdown, I'm like, you're picking Mordekaiser against Brazil? They know what that does. And then it looked like they had no idea the whole game. I'm like, yeah. okay, fair enough. Yeah, um, they had no fucking clue. <laughs> yeah, the last mention I wanted to add on to the tiebreakers, like, I think they got downloaded. I don't actually think they were playing that different. I think they're just extreme all-in aggro style was like throwing teams that were trying to like oh i'm at worlds i want to play a little bit more conservative they were just getting thrown off because you saw dfm literally tp to mid turret with the chanel channeling because they knew they would get dove upon they baited that like they read that like so far ahead and Lao fell for it and just got stomped and they just kept on getting stomped so i really like how they play i hope that this is their first year as an org in uh league i think or like first or second year so honestly they could go really far um so this is good news for brazil they've been kind of like in the middle bottom tier of wildcard teams for a long time before like and then way long ago they were like the heir apparent like the second best wildcard team so maybe they're like getting close to there again yeah um so that's that for loud i will say saigon buffalo also very good aggressive team really funny to watch i i'm so glad that they're back again for another tournament here's the i hear their coach is leaving because he said he would retire or quit but he would quit if they didn't make uh groups so mm, they didn't yeah um but we'll talk about the other vietnamese team when we get to groups yeah I, th- did you guys since we're talking about like loud and and saigon and other teams we can move on from eg uh, is there any you know did you want to talk about rng or drx like drx i know we were like oh that, that might be a streaky team but they came out hot you know what i'm saying so before we get to the uh the group teams i i think we can finish off like a send-off for the rest of the playing teams detonation focus okay. me yep. i think definitely deserves that's true some conversation yep um i, I don't know where to start so i'm just gonna start with the evy memes dude no, the guy no, in the yeah. crowd going Emmy <laughs> after every <laughs> single play he makes he gets a good play. Emmy, he dies. Emmy, it's just so unbelievably funny. Like I was watching the the vods, and I just couldn't stop cracking up every time I heard him say Emmy. And then you hear the casters; it's like patient time and Mark's there. Something like, can you guys hear that? Like I know we can hear it. It's like right there, but I don't know if the mic can hear it. So they would just pause every time the guy would say Emmy, and they're like, I don't know if we're supposed to be pausing. I don't know if the audience can hear the guy say Emmy. But we can. So it's just really freaking funny. Um, dude, I love that. Like, that's that's what's so great about these other regions. It's what's so great about Brazil and, like, Japan. Mm-hmm. They're, they're Japan, right? DFM? 
Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's like they have these such like they're they're such smaller region teams, right? But they have such powerful fan bases. So it makes Loud exciting, right? You want Loud to be good because they have such a big fan base. They bring so much energy, dude. The crowd is just like drumming and like stomping their feet and cheering the whole time. It's like it's like a freaking football game. It's so dope. It's so mm-hmm. cool. And honestly, it, it's like we don't get that kind of excitement enough from like our major region teams, right? Like when the last time we were like watching like Korea versus China in the finals and you heard people drumming their feet on the ground yeah. in the stage and chanting. Like it's so rare and I want that for our major region teams. Dude, I want some dude to be like impact, you know, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Something just hilarious. And we need our own memes. And uh, honestly, I wish Debt Innovation Focus Me beat RNG just so we could get more Evi in group stage. It would be hilarious. Um, and that's 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 it for the memes. Uh, well, how they played? I mean, they played pretty pretty well. I think I actually don't remember most of the games, but I think <laughs> they played pretty well. <laughs> I I can cover that part. DFM took yeah. game one on RNG. They mm-hmm. RNG was eighteen and zero against wild cards in their history, right? Like they just did not ever wow. lose to wild cards. They last MSI this year, like they just absolutely giga stomped every wild card. It like felt like cyberbullying watching that crap. So DFM not only beat them, they beat them in a non cheese way. Like DFM is unironically a top two. It depends on what you count as wild card, right? Because to me, PS, PCS, and Vietnam aren't wild cards. They get two seats. Is that really a wild card at that point? Yeah. I don't really know. It's like some in between. So of the traditional wild cards, like DFM is probably number one right now. Like they can play a solid game and beat RNG. That. Very few teams in the world can do that. Like, T1 couldn't do it for three games in a row. So, like, uh, I mean, this is a big deal. Uh, so, I'm really excited about them. I really like the personality on their team. Uh, Beyond Gaming, really strange to me. It actually is amazing to me. They didn't even make it to, like, the like far. Like, this is weird. PCS does not usually, like, stumble before the knockout stage. And no one's talking about it because no one really talks about PCS. But that's really concerning. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention, I already mentioned Turkey, and I don't really care that much about the Isters gaming. Well, is she? Can we just disband Oceana and just let them like move o- anyone who wants to do pro play come to NA? Because it's kind of getting sad. Mm-hmm. Like, there was a like Pentanet beat C9 once when it was the perks roster, and then ever since then, it's just been watching like the corpse of a region with like some players who have been there for years. Like, Tally's been there for years, and he's yeah. not good, guys. No, like, I'm sorry, bad. they've almost basically run out of talent and Oceana because NA took them all, right? So why are they still being sent here to get tortured? I, I honestly don't get it. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree with that. And honestly, DFM, the way that all happened, it kind of made me even saltier that Mad Lions made it, that Mad Lion, uh, that EU got an extra seed over uh, another region getting a second seed or something like that. Just because it, it feels... Again, I, I just don't like the idea of there's four major regions and three of them got three seeds. You're you're basically yeah. saying, all right, good luck. Most likely, none of none of you who are not a major region team in plans yet, uh, we don't care about you. So uh, that yeah, that, yeah. D- DFM should have made it out, and I think they would have made it out if uh, Mad Lions didn't make didn't um, get the extra seed. Yeah, I mean it's just so stacked against them, right? Like you're you're your opponent to get into group stage not even like not even to win the championship or like do anything <laughs> yeah. just qualify for the title is to play the msi champion it's to play the fourth seed from lpl who is like one of the favorites for the entire tournament are you joking yeah so, just get, yeah, get, I get mean, rid of fourth seeds it just it's just ridiculous it's it's so stacked against you and it's like I think it, it just, like, narratively for the audience, it just feels bad. You just feel yeah. like you're watching DFM RNG. You're like, oh, my God, they took a game. That's illegal. Oh, <laughs> no. The rest, of the, the rest of the series, that's what's illegal. That yeah. was disgusting. Like, it's just not fair. So, um, yeah, I mean, everybody's complaining about it, right? I think Jet had a really good breakdown on uh, some ideas and, like, some reasons why it's, like, not okay to have this play-in situation, right? But... So you guys can check that out for I think a really high quality argument. But yeah, we're all in the same boat here, right? It's like it's playing needs to change. We, we <laughs> yeah. want to have fun games. <laughs> we want yeah. entertainment. We don't want RNG MSI champions beating up on literally a random team from a minor <laughs> region. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I mean I, I like the underdog story, but underdog stories work when 
everybody had they're on the same playing field like yeah just because someone's yeah. better you didn't watch the rocky movie and then before he got into the fight they like shot him in the foot and he's supposed to fight yeah. with a bullet in his foot right like yeah. and that's kind of how it feels like what they're doing to the minor region teams yeah <laughs> it's like if you're like you know you're a superhero right you don't start the movie off by fighting the bad guy and like the big bad guy at the end. like <laughs> yeah, you right level right. up you train yep. you have a training montage you have an upgrade and you beat people who are slightly above you and you overcome it right and then no is, you just start at the final boss you just start at one of the you just start playing against one of the best teams in the entire tournament <laughs> so <laughs> the analysts even yeah. brought up the, i i'm really surprised they brought this up on on the cast they were like they memed on the fact that like while cartoons would be like, oh yeah, they go home. Uh, we learn lessons from worlds this year, and then come back to get <laughs> stop to get. I was like, holy crap! Like it happens yeah. so much, and like they say these statements so much that even the broadcast is like comfortable enough to say it on air. I'm like, damn, dude! Like we're all thinking it, right? Every time yeah. it, Istanbul Wildcats shows up for another tournament, I'm like, oh, have they learned lessons from the the booty stomping they got at MSI? No, no, they didn't. I'm just gonna get it's stumped impossible. again. <laughs> what are you it's gonna learn? So hard. Yeah. No yeah. closer, no worlds. Apparently, is what I learned. No closer, no wins. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feels All right. Bad. Uh, let's let's move on because uh, we we got other teams to talk about. Uh, you guys want to talk any any more about RNG or Fnatic or you know any of the other teams that made it? I I guess we can officially just make our group predictions now and then talk yeah, about true. the teams mm -hmm. as we move through group. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and we'll, we can also we'll cover talk the play about, teams. Uh, we could do if you want to talk about what we saw in the meta, uh, just because it's our first glimpse of like world's meta. Uh, we could do that True. afterwards as well. So yeah, let's True. let's do that. We can kind so, of mix it in. Yeah, I think my my meta stuff is gonna be pretty tied to how well the teams in each group are gonna go. So okay, who wants to who wants to take in. the first stab at groups uh, prediction? Unless you've already kind of made those predictions well let's we have to start with group a okay i mean yeah, do, you want, just... do you want to go everyone does their own or we just like go group a group b yeah let's, let's just, just group go a, by group, group b yeah and then talk about each each team who we think is making out and why kind of thing yeah i think that's yeah, yeah, a yeah. solid let's do way that. to go sounds good all right okay let's i'm down for that um i'll start then with group a i have edg world champions t1 cloud nine fanatic and mm, i hate you very simply Sorry. put, I mean, EDG is world champion. <laughs> Same roster. They came back. T1 mm -hmm. hasn't proved shit to me yet, right? They look kind of so-so in their local, but the rumors are they're looking good in scrims, which who the fuck knows what that means. Uh, and then we have C C9. I honestly, I've been impressed by C9, but like, there is, what are they going to do in this group? And I hope by saying this, I hope it curses it so that they do get out because C9 always finds a way to boom at like some team, and usually it's the Chinese team. So it can happen, right? And for Fnatic's sake, like, uh, they got out, but honestly, when Healy came back, I felt like they looked worse. I wanted to save this bit for a group stage because it makes more sense to talk about. Honestly, if they just play Rux, like, it, it seems like a very Reddit armchair analyst thing, but, like, Healy was literally solo losing games. He stole a shutdown, a 302 MF kill shutdown or whatever it was in one of their key games and lost them the game. And I was like, what are you doing, dude? You're just giving up first button, stealing shutdowns on support, like, on a free kill you're literally trolling man so i just have no faith in fanatic they might take a game or two but they're not gonna they're gonna be fourth yeah i i agree i also have fanatic in fourth honestly the top three i'm i'm so back and forth on because just because china tends to have one team that just booms and yep. china's doesn't tend to have you know the the when china wins world that team doesn't tend to do well or even make it <laughs> so i'm like yeah. half i'm half thinking that either, either edg is gonna get first or they're gonna get third i don't think they get second i don't think there's a world they get second so and mm. i th i think pa partially copium honestly cloud nine but i think cloud nine makes it out i just don't know yeah. if, if, whether it's korea or china that makes it out as well i think one of them is just gonna crash and burn i think i want to put edg in third just because i i can't imagine faker not making it out of groups yeah yeah no yeah i have the i actually have that that one right there t1 c9 edg and then um what is, whatever that's fanatic is. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah uh so mine is very heavily based on uh how the meta so unfortunately the meta has gotten to a very bad point for c9 but i don't care i'm on the full copium right um we're back to full-on engaged supports and yeah. i do think that Caria has honestly been locked up in freaking enchanter jail now that he's on um engaged supports right thresh 
Leona, Nautilus, and Mumu, all this stuff was basically skill shots. Uh, Caria can actually just 1v9 game. So I do think T1 is going to be the best team in the group. Um, I do think Caria is going to just actually be able to play the game. And Gumiyushi, as whatever opinions we want or have of him, <laughs> he's still one of the best ADCs like in this tournament, right? Like He's not the best. He's maybe not even top four or five, but... I mean, he's he's really good still, and I think mm -hmm. Carrie is absolutely insane. Maybe one of the best supports in this in this whole tournament. So, I think T was gonna be first. I think they're gonna be really damn good. Um, I think C9, honestly, they probably do get third because the meta. I mean, Zven <laughs> yeah. just never played in, uh, <laughs> engage support meta, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be very new. And I can look, just man. Imagine... He played engage on Ezreal, all right. He can do it. <laughs> True. <laughs> But we're going full copium, okay? We're going all the way in. C9 is going to get second because Ven's going to clutch it up. We're going to have some crazy Berserker highlights. We're going to have T1 versus C9. It's going to be 10 ADC bans. And then <laughs> Berserker is still going to put out the 41% yeah. win, win rate Zeri and Pentakill T1 to make it into second for the tiebreaker for first or something crazy like that. I don't know. Um, EDG going third is just honestly... It's just pure hopium. <laughs> There's no <laughs> real reason. I'm pretty sure that this team is freaking like still cracked. From what I've seen in Champs Q, all of their players are so damn good. <laughs> even if like they're not even like one of the, they're probably the fourth best LPL team, even though they're the third seed. And I still think they would just they're just insane. But you know what? They're gonna collapse, guys. They're just gonna randomly collapse. Because we said so, and C9 is going to make it out of this group. Okay. So, um, well, you guys I, are going to notice some a trend. In my prediction. Yeah, no, I, Anyways, I like no, I like the way you're <laughs> trending. <laughs> I like I like the way that trend is playing out. Uh, that that's yeah. exactly what I would want to happen. Here's what I think is going to happen. I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's just going to be EDG T1, Fnatic Cloud9. So, I, yeah, I, probably. Probably. But, but, but fourth. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, this is that's what I think is going to happen. I like your scenario better, honestly. I, I would yeah, yeah, do yeah. that. But I think that's what's just going to happen. I mean, yeah, there could be uh, some upsets here and there, but I, I think the way it plays out is is just that. Uh, I don't think there's any going to be any big surprises here. Um, okay, what about Group B? We have Damwon, Evil Geniuses, G2, and JDG. <laughs> I am so glad EG went into play -ins. I am so glad they got that 3-0 dub over Europe because this group is cursed. Uh, I put JDG, Damwon, EG, G2, and that's Hopium. Like I, We <laughs> saw this matchup six times in a row this year, yeah. only like four months ago. Like I, I'm physically hurt by the fact that they're in the same group. I hope it's a redemption story. I hope they go friggin' 5-0 against Europe. I don't even care what happens yeah. afterward at this tournament, but it's unlikely, right? Or five one. They lost once in this group stage. Uh I really hope so. But it's hard, man. This is like EG, I think Inspired said it himself, and he's been very confident, right? He was saying they would stop mad, and then they did it. He also said this is a curse. Like, I think they say he said something along the lines of like we're screwed. Like this this group is <laughs> too hard, right? And he's yeah. probably right. Um, if I was not a betting man, if I was a betting man, I'd probably put EG fourth. But for my pickums, I put him third. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have I have the same, exact same one as Kevin. I have EG fourth <laughs> and then JDG in first. I, I like yeah, pretty much exact same reasoning. It's kind. Of, I'd like to see EG do well, but we've seen this. We we've seen this already. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not betting, guys. So I don't really. Care. <laughs> I'm putting JDG first. EG second, Dan yeah. on third, and GT fourth. Uh, it's a little troll. Actually, it's very, very troll. Very troll. Because there's like, there's literally no way EG, like, take a game <laughs> off JDG. And then it's very hopium to think they take a game off of uh, Damwon. All right, Damwon looks pretty boosted in their, like, regional qualifiers and stuff. But, like, this team is one of those teams where it's like, they have a terrible draft. They have no game plan. And they just style on you mechanically so unbelievably hard that it just doesn't matter. You just get jungle gapped for no reason by Canyon. So this team is pretty crazy. Dan one. I mean, it's like they're not even close to being one of the favorites for the tournament. And yet there's just way too insane of a team for some for like NA to deal with. So it's rough. But EG, they have that warm up buff. They have the Cloud9 play-ins buff. Okay. 
play-ins has actually always helped every single NA team look very competitive. TL, 2020, they almost got out of groups going through play-ins, right? Um, who, uh, C9, last year, went through play-ins, made it out of groups. Kind of on a lucky tiebreaker, right? So we always do quite well in play-ins and then almost make it out. And I think that EG leveling up have an advance on the meta read and are warmed up and are comfortable that they can make a miracle run and maybe do it. It would be one of the craziest upsets to ever happen. Um, also, from what we know of previous years is like sometimes these groups do go the way that is expected. But a lot of times the group, these types of groups, these like group of deaths do not go the way. Uh, that are expected, right? For all we know, G2 could actually make it out of this group because they have Caps and they have Yankos and they could just go Super Saiyan mode. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, it, you know, it's, uh, it's, yeah, EG is going to 2-0 Europe. We're going to go 1-1 one one with JDG. That's right. And we're going to, fuck it, we're going to 2-0 Dan 1. And we're going to make it out. Go with your heart, baby. Go yeah. With your heart. <laughs> Who cares? It doesn't matter anymore. I love it. Uh, we already I, won I, our worlds. Yeah, exactly. We, we, this was great already. So, yeah, I, I'm actually just going with uh, Kevin and Alistair's because there's definitely sounded more. You suck. Come on, guys. But, uh... <laughs> See, I, I can, I can. You, my my predictions have a bit of mental gymnastics for fun. Yours are just like out the window clown <laughs> level. Like, <laughs> there's just no basis. Like, I like teams. Yeah, Dude, no, but... JoJo is the next coming of Faker or Caps or whatever. Okay, we have old Caps sitting around getting old. His bones are getting creaky. His wrists are deteriorating. We will destroy this group. Jojo is going to beat, um, was it Yagao and Showmaker so hard that they're going to tilt off the face of the planet. They're going to be like, yo, Showmaker, or no, Kenyon, or whatever. Your world song last year, no one remembers it, even though it was about <laughs> you guys. How's it feel, right? So, yeah. Dude, I it's so DM. Chad, too, like, that he gets, <laughs> like, the game gets delayed because Jojo's wearing Crocs. He's like. wearing Crocs, bro. <laughs> what? <laughs> A Chad, bro. Like what a just, Canadian. Just, yeah, what That's actual so mental advantage right there. Like complete <laughs> utter mental like domination. Oh, man, like it's so good. I'm gonna pause this game for you idiots because I have to change shoes. <laughs> <laughs> You're on my yeah. time now. You're on JoJo time. He's gonna roll that. on and like heal eats next time. He's, dude, like no, he's, gonna, he, he's gonna think Healy Crocs. Kind of Healy Crocs, he's gonna Healy Crocs. Jesus. They're a thing, bro. Oh, They're a thing. Please. Oh, they are? Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, I thought you made that up. Yeah, no. I know. I was like, <laughs> okay. That's I wanted to roll in on Healy Crocs. That would be freaking hilarious. I want the <sighs> whole team to roll in on Healy Crocs and like flip everybody off or something. Bro, they'll get fired for, for that. But... For World Semis, <laughs> I'm going to give League Dad a pair of Crocs with spurs on them. <laughs> Dude, what if they High won? High noon League Dad. What if they won and then like <laughs> rolled away? With their Healy Crocs <laughs> just around the other oh team as they get done. <laughs> All right, let's go back uh, to dude, reality world. They have no, they have the they have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle like freaking jerseys, right? They got to do something with like I don't know. They got to get like ninja. I mean, Crocs Impact is Mas like. Master Splinter in the meme. The oh, old yeah. man. Yeah. The <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, true. He's just For yeah. Sure. It's, it's, it's good times. Good times. Yeah, right. he's just well, making it out, guys. You guys are. Uh, sure. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Okay, Group C, mm -hmm. you got Rogue, Gam, DRX, Top Esports. Yeah, mm. so this one's probably the spicier one of my predictions. So uh, I put Top first, then I put Gam second, DRX, Rogue. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't seen number one VCS in a while. Like, we haven't seen the cream of the crop of VCS. Like, they literally decided to go play some other tournament than go to MSI. And Saigon Buffalo, like, yeah, granted, they went, like, 2A, and they haven't, like, made huge waves. They are competitive. I don't know what their number one team looks like, to be honest. I don't know if they're going to be competitive or not. And, like, DRX stopped playing, sure, but I, I'm i still not fully convinced. Like, they were they were good in play-ins, but, again, it was in play-ins. I've seen this team enough in LCK where I'm like, uh. So, uh, realistically, maybe DRX gets second, right? But I don't want to sleep on a team with levi on it just like completely taking down like an old school team and i i don't know what drx is gonna pull but i think that gam is gonna really surprise a lot of people so they i want them to be my bet for the one team that like no one expects out of china korea to make it out 
I hope. Mm, very excited. Uh, it is also weird to put the number one EU C at the bottom, but I was like, I don't know what to do with you guys, so I just put them fourth. <laughs> I mean, we saw what happened with the last <laughs> Ro Ro Worlds last year, so. <laughs> yeah. True. They finally got over the hey. curse, so maybe they'll be good this year at Worlds. I don't know. Hey, Rogue last year had really, really close games. I mean, they almost yeah. beat Damwon, it, like, and they almost beat some other team, and it was just, like, super damn close for Rogue. Very, very sad. I mean, it baited everybody into wanting Hansama, so... <laughs> <laughs> he had a good world. It was just objective. Yeah, he had a very good... He had an insane world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. For mine, I, I think it's pretty clear, at least in my opinion. Top, DRX, Rogue, Gambit. That's... Yeah? I... Wow. I don't know. Yeah. It's Mitchell, boring, you have but... no you have no NA team in this one uh, I know. <laughs> to throw for. Hey, so. I still have Malrang, dude. Malrang's my boy. Okay. He's okay. J4. Well, and, and Levi was. Levi used to play in NA, so there's the true. NA representative right there. That is true. Mostly he... in Academy for some reason, but yes. He, true. He and here. in, uh, in uh, what is it? Uh, NA versus EU. Was it All-Stars or something? He played in that, and everybody oh, flamed right. 100 Thieves for playing a sub-jungler. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, pff, dude, I actually saw Levi and Champsu get completely styled on. So oh, I don't no. know if I have a lot of faith oh, in him. God. It was literally one game, one highlight, one play, and I'm like, ooh, you played that pretty badly, bro. <laughs> Uh, so I have a little bit of doubt to Gam for this year. Uh, I, I just don't know enough about that team. I am, yeah, I, I'm basically trolling my predictions. Okay, I, I, I'm going to let you guys in a secret. My pickups are not what I'm saying right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay so <laughs> this is, this is our podcast that. predictions. My pickups, I want rewards on my things, so <laughs> it's not the same. I've been reading my but... pickups the whole time. <laughs> no, I have not. I've just, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I got top rogue. And then DRX Gam. Yeah, I think Rogue's making it out. Not for any good reason. Actually, Rogue, their entire team is just a bunch of chokers. So, if I'm being honest, Odoame and Larson, very notorious chokers. I think they just they got over it in the finals against G2 because they were just the better team. But, like, so many years when it's like the, like, when they're close to the enemy team and then, like, it's not clear who's better or worse, Odoame and Larson tend to choke and be worse. Um, I'm saying they got over it, though. Let's just say they got over it, and they're going to clutch it out. I do think Malrang's that kind of player where it's like, he thinks a lot about the game. He has really fun stuff, right? J4 with lethal tempo and phase rushes. Obviously, I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm an enjoyer. But um, they have this energy where it's like, it, no matter what goes wrong or how bad the game looks or how bad the draft looks, they always can find some way to get a foot in the game. They can always, they're just very tenacious. Like, they never give up. They're always very clever. Um, and I do think that Comp and Trimby is very untested uh, on the international stage. I mean, they have maybe the potential to just be really insane. And I do think that Top Esports have Jackie Love, and he is notorious for, well, just inting randomly. Okay, he doesn't do it against bad teams, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of underestimating that happens at Top Esports. They're so clearly the favorite in this group, so clearly that one of the favorites for the whole tournament. I wouldn't be surprised if they get a little cocky, maybe drop a game on accident. Same thing with um, DRX, right? DRX, kind of just a sus team overall. They're obviously a cut above because they they play in Korea. They, they are LCK team, um, but they could very easily just underestimate Rogue or Gambit and lose some games. And, you know, it's just best of ones, right? Anything can happen best of ones. This is what makes this... What makes the format so great and also so stupid is that a team can really just luck their way out of group sometimes. And, you know, I feel like Rogue has the Sorry. formula. Yeah, <laughs> Cloud9 has the formula. Rogue has the formula. EG honestly does not, but I'm still voting for it. So, um, yeah, I think Rogue can maybe make it out. Yeah. I would add in, if Rogue wasn't, like, if this wasn't a world with four Korean teams in there, then, yeah, I think they have a chance. Like, if one of the groups didn't have a Korean team, but, like, Mamrang was getting booty clapped back in Korea. He went 1 in 35 on Jin Air, and he used his highest placement ever was on KT as a fifth place team. Like, his aggro style was really cool in EU and, like, really put a lot of people, like, scared him. But, like, he was just getting schooled all of his time in Korea. So, as far as I can tell, like, I don't know what Korean jungler is going to lose to him. Um, and yeah, that's but, like, I mean, that was years ago, and he was, yeah, he was and, and he wasn't was playing like, J4, change. he wasn't playing Phase Rush J4, yeah. like, Mitchell he wasn't playing Phase Rush J4, that thing, <laughs> that alone will carry him, 
and beats yeah. every other Korean jungler because they're they're just meta slaves. Like I build Conqueror because that's what this other jungler right. did. No, Mal Rang is using his brain. Stop it, Kevin. It wasn't that long ago, guys. I'm just saying. Okay, you know what, Mitchell? I'm rooting. I'm rooting for them now because I just want to see <laughs> yes. your pick do well with Mal Rang. Y'all uh, picking Rogue at Worlds. That is, that is brave. <laughs> I got hey, man. to lose. I got nothing to lose either. Honestly, <laughs> I didn't say it. I said it before the podcast, but I'm going to say it to the podcast listeners right now. I am completely on just like, I'm on a different plane of existence. I've been working on a final project and it got extended and my brain is complete mush. I have no analytical skills right now. This is all purely just like YOLO predictions. I'm very tired. I've had a lot of caffeine and Rogue's oh, going right. to take it. Rogue's oh, gonna goddamn take it. Oh, I mean, right, I think yeah, Gigabyte yeah. Maurice, you guys are like talking as if like you guys are picking the the controversial first seed LEC. Oh, that's so controversial to get second. Yeah. No, yeah, Gigabyte but his Maurice other group, his other group picks though were. A little yeah, those those were, <laughs> those were on those a were different out there. plane. This one's not as bad, but it's because there's no yeah, NAT it's... here. That's what I'm saying. All right, let's go to Group right. D. We got Gen G. Flying Oysters, which I just love that name, by the way. I might just put them first for the name. Royal never gives up at 100 Thieves. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> really interesting group. Genji is one of the favorites. Like, it's one of my favorites, too. Yeah. They're, like, probably my second favorite to win the tournament. Uh, the thing that's interesting about this group is RNG hasn't looked great in play-ins. I mean, they did Gigastomp DFM when they, like, got angry. But they were just up and down, right? But RNG historically has had no issue with the Samsung Genji organization. They have... Cons almost always they i think they may have lost once they basically every time they meet in groups they're just like oh look it's a free win and they just take them to town like it's really one-sided of course it's a different team genji looks really strong now but like rng just this is the, one of the few korean teams them and dragon x i think you just never care like if rng is against t1 you worry for rng but there's enough history where like they won't be intimidated even if genji's number one so I think they'll go one and one and then just lose to like Flying Oyster 100 Thieves once and get second seed. Um, <laughs> I have Flying Oyster third. Uh, this is the first time a PCS team that isn't friggin' like PSG is up there. Of course, they've lost River and stuff, but they used to lose players all the time and still get first, right? So Flying Oysters, they like 3 0 Beyond Gaming in the finals. Like they, they're probably going to be a lot better than Beyond. Beyond wasn't very good. So hopefully they show something. They have a really funny no name. Like this is just like, the most hilarious name in a while. Uh, and then 100 Thieves. Why? Like, no. why, why is 100 Thieves even come to Worlds? Oh, oh, I, I thought you meant why 100 Thieves. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's, a, that's a question on its own. But yeah, but why Flying Oysters? Did we know? Like, why? No idea. I mean, it might, it's probably some kind of pun, like in, in Chinese. It must like sound funny or like has a different really? meaning, a double meaning. It, but I don't know. Fly. It could yeah. just be the same thing as like Unicorns of Love. Yeah. True. I mean, that one at least kind of makes sense, you know? The, does it's it? It's like very like, yeah, it's <laughs> like, ooh, unicorns, love. But like, oysters don't okay, fly. Okay, fair enough. No, but it's like the, the name of unicorns, are unicorns real, of love. <laughs> unicorns of yeah. love was. Unicorns of love Neither is, is love. Love you're is like, not real. You're like, oysters <laughs> don't fly. I'm like, unicorns aren't real. <laughs> I was like, wait, wasn't the premise shot from the beginning? <laughs> But okay, flying oysters. Like, what? Well, it's just a little circle thing, and it's yeah. Flying. And what, one what's... one is a horse with wings. It's also yeah, flying. Uh, that's that's dope. Pegasus. It's got a horn. Uh, oh too. my bad, yeah. my bad. It's got a horn. A horse with a horn. Okay. Unicorns. Uh, of love anyways, is cool. <laughs> flying oysters is just dude. Not if flying oysters guys. pops off, you're gonna come back next week. Like, dude, they're so cool. Did you see their shirts? <laughs> their uh, name okay. is so edgy. No one knows what it means. <laughs> so <right>. edgy. <laughs> A hundred these, like I mean, okay. Last year they were in a pretty cursed group too. It was like top esports and someone else, and they went three three. They took a game off yeah. top and then beat a wildcard team or whatever. Um, good for them. I don't like the team. You know, we all know this. Uh, but I hope that NA has a good showing at Worlds. I hope we continue to. Do, we did better than EU last year in terms of record. I hope we do it again. So chip in your two wins, hundred these, and go fuck off. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Wow. I just don't like 100 Thieves, and I don't know why, really, because they're not... I like Closer. I like some of their players. It's just what every time they play, I just fall asleep, and I'm just like, I, I'm in pain. I love them Someday. I do like Someday, too. Yes, I like Someday, and I like Closer. And then every time I see Abadagi play, I'm just like, I, I don't like this team. I think <laughs> they, I think I figured they, it out now. That's the focus. Have they have daddy energy. They have, they have some daddy and Papa Smithy. That's crazy. Yeah, I like Papa Smithy, too. I just don't like the, how they're they play. All, they're a whole the family. 
They have a whole family. They have two dads and they have a dog. Abadoggy. Abadoggy. They got, I they like got the, the whole I like the squad. dads, but they're doggy. <laughs> they got to put them down. <laughs> okay, your turn, oh I'll start on that note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm um, not sure I'm supposed to follow that, but uh... <laughs> yeah, um, I have hundred thieves third, and I mean the rest is pretty much what you'd expect: Gen yeah, G okay. first, then RNG and Flying Oyster in fourth. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I think hundred thieves and Flying Oyster are probably going to go one one. I just think it's more likely that hundred thieves will like randomly take a game off of another team. Um, honestly, if they if they Flip flop fourth and third. I honestly would not be too surprised. Yeah, <clears throat> it's pretty doomed for hundred thieves. Yeah. I think they're still gonna make it out though. I think it's gonna be Gen G hundred thieves. <laughs> I think <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty Get doomed. Get this man some sleep, bro. I, I still don't think they're gonna make it out because honestly, like hundred thieves, the meta change. All right, Gen G, they're probably gonna go undefeated. RNG, they got. I think they got a little bit of. They got. They're gonna be a little cocky. They're gonna also be like, you know, they lost a game to Detonation Focus Me, right? Detonation Focus Me is gonna pass on the baton to Hundred Thieves, right? And instead of it being a best of a five, though, it's just a best of one. So you just have to take one game. Exactly what um, Detonation Make the, the Focus Me did to RNG. So you just take one game off of RNG. Uh, and you 2-0 uh, flying oysters. Oysters. And then you win a tiebreaker against RNG in a very clutch and very ridiculous fashion. And I think they can uh, make it happen because I'm really hoping that with the meta change, right, who he becomes a human being again. Because honestly, I also feel like he was in Enchanter Jail, just not the same player. Uh, but he's going to be on Engage. Uh, their bot lane is just not going to be as focused. It's a very top-centric meta, too. That's where Someday shines the most, right? You get this man Aatrox. The champ's not balanced. Uh, you get a strong jungle matchup for closer. And, yeah, you just got a winning uh, you got a winning formula right there. So I hope it's enough. And I think that uh, RNG, you know what? They didn't make it out of groups in 2019, actually, with Uzi. They didn't. And this could be another year. They very well could just bomb out. Um, yeah, and I haven't picked a uh, picked uh, a, a Chinese team to bomb out yet, right? I said EDG. Oh no, I did mm. EDG. Damn. Okay, two teams are bombing out. <laughs> two Chinese teams are bombing out this year. You know, I mean, that's what that. happened last year, so you you could be right. I'll be honest, sure. Mitchell. You blame the lack of sleep. I don't see a difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think you would have made this prediction. Same. Yeah, you would have made this prediction either way. Uh, okay, whatever. Um, let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about what you know what we saw out there in the meta. Uh, cause again, like Aatrox, like you said, OP, uh, we saw Silas a bunch, uh, Maokai flexed in like three different positions, um, you know, yep. uh, just back to the engage support. So what did you think of, uh, meta overall? What are your thoughts? Uh, you like, did you like what you saw? Um, yeah, anything. Yeah. So I pick Aatrox on my pick -ums. I put Aatrox as my most picked character. He's close to up there and he's been played or banned very often. So He's close makes to sense 100 percent, or if not a hundred percent. Yeah, he was close to, except for one of the series. I think yeah. one of the best of fives. Literally, no one picked or banned it, so it dropped the rate a lot. Um, I think Hecarim is quite strong, but he's kind of had like some really good performances and some really bad. Maokai has been even more powerful than I expected. Like there was just so many times where you just see Maokai stalling for a year while like he's in a bad position, and then suddenly it becomes a good position, or he, he just starts like a super good engage right from a mile away. Um, and he has very reliable CC reliability, and he has the like, he has cheat words. Like he just throws words all the time everywhere. And like you try to flank, yeah. you try to do anything, like make a bush plane. He's just like, Ooh, throw a sapling. I think it's like definitely it was his win rate is super justified by that. I don't get why Callista is being banned thirty times, like the most bans of any character in this tournament so far. I every time I saw it go through, it, it just did. It, it was fine. It did something. Yeah. Uh, I have exceptions. If Ruler plays it, if Hope plays it, if certain players play it, yeah, it's going to look disgusting, right? And don't let it through. But don't ban it against a wild card team. What's it going to do? Just stop them, man. Come on, guys. So I think Callista's still over banned. It's always a, it's always a scrim demon. I I wish we could see more scrims. It's got to always be a scrim demon. Why would it be like this? Um, the last thing I wanted to leave the meta off on is, or two things. 
engaged supports are just the top four most pick and then yumi who's banned most of the time but if she's let through she's disgusting and kaisa's back so i don't think rng will bomb out i do think some chinese team will bomb out but kaisa's back guys so you either get a free ban for rng or he's gonna look good on him as he always does although he did lose that one game against dfm on kaisa yeah we'll exactly exactly yeah. he lost he once lost in his career i can't believe it two a wild card team 100 Thieves is basically a wild card team thank you thank you, you just i end my ted talk here myself <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so honestly, I don't know why Aatrox is being allowed through most games. Uh, Champ's broken. There's uh, He's not even building tank items or bruiser items, and he's just one-shotting everyone <laughs> being unkillable um, because, you know, Death Stance is a fair and balanced item. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll stick more to AD carry because that's what I know. Um, please stop picking Nyla. She's been picked twice. She's not good. Just just stop. Just, yeah. just don't. Just, just don't. Like, looks looks pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, she she is. She she's just yeah. bad. Um, other than that, I I'm actually really enjoying watching Tristana. Uh, I think she's very hyped to watch, and seeing her picked as much as she has honestly kind of surprised me, but you know pleasantly at least. Uh, Aphelios, no surprise. Misfortune, no surprise. Caitlyn's actually lost every game she's been yep. in, but she's also the second highest banned champion, which is odd. Uh, it scrims, I guess. I don't know. Um, and Aphelios doesn't surprise anyone. So, yeah, we we talked about it uh, in the last episode where the scrim meta was very heavy on Kate and Draven, from what you know, Sven was saying on Double Lift's YouTube video or whatever. Um, and yeah, that's how it started out, right? But then the Caitlyn completely fell off. I think we also kind of predicted that, right? Where Caitlyn metas usually don't last very long; they don't stay because people figure out that oh. As soon as you get onto the main stage and you don't take all these stupid trades, it's actually very easy to just go a little bit down in lane and outscale it really hard in the mid game. And there's a lot of champions right now that are good into Misfortune or good into Caitlyn, like Misfortune. And we also started seeing Varus come out too. That's uh, another me. another utility uh, bot lane ADC. I think it's just because it's a top lane meta, right? You just want either heavy prio like with a Draven, but you need a good Draven player, or you want um, yeah, just utility in the bot lane, right? So just Aphelios, uh, just, uh, what's, oh my god, what did I just say? Misfortune, Varus, like those kind of champions in the bot lane. Um, I also think that um, Tristana is just, uh, it's like always been an old, really good matchup into both Kaisa and Kalista, but I don't actually think we saw those exact matchups, um, but maybe we did, I, I don't remember. But um, so Tristana, I think, will see play into stuff like Kaisa um, and Kalista and stuff. On the Kalista point, I actually do think it's still quite good. I think it got better. Even though it got nerfed, it got better just because we have engaged supports now. Yeah. Um, Kal Kalista with engaged supports is just like, you lose, like, you, you, you have a strong laning phase, right? But even if you get thrown down, even if you get put behind, Kalista, all she has to do is press R for your engaged support, and it's just enough. Like, she can literally provide no damage, bait the enemy team into blowing cooldowns on your shield bow, you die, but hey, you got a good ulti off. And, like, that's kind of just all that matters sometimes when the meta is so top-heavy focused. Um, and, and it's also just, like, I think it is a bit of a mental advantage, right? People have been playing against Kalista and getting, like, screwed over by random engages from super far away that they don't expect, and they're just tilted by it. So they don't want to play against Kalista, right? A wildcard team with the Kalista... You dumpster in lane, right? But then they just randomly rotate top. They throw their like their their support at you, and all of a sudden they're like they got a random rift herald or something. Like it's just it's just really annoying to play against. It's just not balanced, right? The Callisto ulti we've been saying needs to get changed. Um, so I do still think that that's gonna stay a mainstay where we're still gonna see a lot of Callisto bans, and whenever it gets through, it's gonna get picked very early on. Um, Aatrox being strong is just like. It's been strong all year long, pretty much, but, like, everything around him has gotten nerfed very heavily. Not necessarily in top lane, but all of the junglers that would stand a chance against Aatrox, like Trundle and stuff, and Wukong and other bruisers, got nerfed. And a lot of mid laners, like Ari and Silas, a lot of, like, skirmishy, bruisery type mid laners also got nerfed. And now, we still see Silas in the game, right? But he's heavily nerfed. We still see, like... Like Hecarim and stuff and Maokai being very strong, 
But honestly, Aatrox doesn't have any problems with his matchups. Like, he just sustains and heals off them even harder. Um, yeah, so I, I'll, we'll go through another round. I have a lot more meta talks, but I'll let Kevin go. Yeah, and then the, the big thing for Aatrox is the friggin' nerfed heal cut after he nerfing healing and shielding across the board. I, yeah. I'll never stop getting mad about this because it just makes no sense. Right? They said that they don't want more healing and shielding, so everyone across the board lost healing and shielding. And then they took the this healing debuff item and went from 40 60 to 25 40. Like, what kind of tomfoolery is this? This is literally just telling, like, oh, we're going to nerf healing, and then we nerfed the heal cut. Yeah. Th that's a large yeah. part why Atrox is so strong because the heal cut items are already, like, so so. Like, some of them are good, but some of them are really booty, especially on certain characters. And they nerfed it even more. Um, so only Chemtech Future Fire and maybe Chainsword and some instances are worth buying. Well, and with no uh, enchanters to buy Future Fire early. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the yes. big thing is that there's no more first item Chemtech Future Fire. And Aatrox is just being completely unchecked because there's no one that mm -hmm. can apply it regularly enough. Because the problem with Aatrox is that you can't just apply it once and like block one instance of healing, right? You block his Gordricker healing. Well, he's actually just healing for like 20 seconds straight. You need someone who can apply it for all those 20 seconds, and there's nobody in the meta that can really do that. Like, that's not an enchanter. It's basically not Yumi with Chemtech, right? So it, he's he's going to be ridiculous. Um, uh, I will also say I'm going to comment on Maokai and Hecarim, because, I mean, Jungle, Tau, I, I know a lot about these champions. I played a lot of them. Very simple, very easy. Maokai, yeah, he, he is broken. I wasn't sure how broken he was going to be, because... Like, he's one of those champions that's, like, super easy to play, super stupid, and super predictable. <laughs> and I don't know if, like, it's it's all a number a matter of, like, were his numbers good enough for pro play? And it turns out they very much are. And this champion has so clearly just become a big stat stick. Like, Kevin, you nailed it. When you catch a Maokai, you didn't catch a Maokai. He caught you, 1v5. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. he just takes your whole freaking team and takes so long to kill. Um, yeah, I think he's pretty stupid. Also, he's, like, he's got this, like, buy effect where he has really good ganks in the early game, but he can't duel for crap, and he can't, like, clear very well. He's very just slow and, like, kind of worthless in the early game sometimes. Like, he gets one rotation of cooldowns, it's very effective in that moment, and then he sits around for like five, six, seven seconds doing nothing, right? That's in the early game. The difference between like something like a Maokai and a Vi, though, right, is Vi doesn't get rolling, doesn't get ahead, doesn't really scale very well, is an ult, and then immediately dies. Maokai, though, will eventually get to the point, no matter how far behind or how badly you put down the tree, he will always come back and become a complete ridiculous menace in the mid game. Um, so that's what I think is crazy about this champion. Is early game jungle counter jungle strats aren't very useful unless like you're playing something like a Graves or like something with really high octane engaged stuff in the in the jungle position. So you just don't really want to attack the Maokai, honestly. Putting him down to the top lane either doesn't really work. He always comes back in lane too. Um, so pretty crazy champion. And then finally, Hecarim. I do think he's a bit overrated i still think he's good and he should be seeing play in the meta but he saw a lot of bands and his the times he was picked he was just like pretty good to okay i i think it maybe it's just a play style thing it does seem like players are still playing hecarim like old hecarim where they're just engaging and using him as like a one shot one go sing, quick engage sort of champion where if you want to play hecarim you have to like build trinity force or eclipse black cleaver or whatever uh, the DPS build is, and you play around the Hecarim for him to carry you the fight. I think that's where he's really, really good. And if teams start playing him like that, then yeah, he's going to be a very OP pick. But with how they're playing right now, they're just playing like one shot, go, just same old like Hecarim like before the patch, and it's just like doesn't very, it doesn't look very good. Um, so th those are some of my big thoughts on the on the big meta champions. Yeah, I and I'm looking at the top ten uh, highest presence champions, and so. Out of the top 10, the highest win rate is actually a Moomoo uh, on support. Uh, the next highest was Aatrox, which is just crazy. The fact that he has a 96% presence and has a 71% win rate. That's ridiculous. Um, and then the yeah. next two highest, the next two highest are uh, Maokai and Silas. Yep. Um, so just, uh, you know, stat checking uh, some of those things. Uh, okay. Anything else on, on the meta? 
good? Are you guys good on that? Yumi is disgusting. That one game where AP Yumi did like oh, yeah. 25, 24k damage, just mm -hmm. unanswered. There's no counter to it basically at all. And she was applying heal debuff, or she could be. Like, it's just yep. dumb, dude. We, we really, really need to fundamentally fix Yumi. She can't stop making her a burst mage whenever you nerf her heal. And whenever you nerf her damage, stop making her a massive healer and buffer. Like, there's got to be an answer. She can't just give 120 AP late game because she attached to you and turned off her monitor. Enchanter, okay? Enchanters as a whole just need to be reworked as a class. And we can yeah. talk about, if we're going to, it's seems like the plans to do like an entire episode just based on like the preseason change that so you come so we can address it more then but yeah i'm down yeah. i'm down get ready for like the yeah. biggest rant of all time like we're just gonna oh no go we're, we're gonna yeah. spend some time talking about bot lane i, I would oh, imagine yeah. i i love enchanter hee <laughs> hee i press shield so yeah easy. we're gonna so become free. pokemon trainers in the jungle so you know there's, yeah. there's lots of stuff to talk about <laughs> yeah be on the lookout <laughs> for fun. a future episode just on preseason <laughs> changes because i know every other i know year, those i know those jobs uh not too long ago but uh that's yeah. a whole episode for itself but well, i did want to go into just one last bit of news which is a little bit sad and uh that's pastry time uh is retiring from casting i think he deserves you know a couple minutes just to you know talk about how you feel about that i mean uh, i couldn't believe that it was happening when i when i read it um he's one of those casters like i don't know he just seems really chill like um he's always been good uh but he's just like not one of the uh, I guess he's not really always in the limelight, uh, so to speak. But I thought he's always yeah. been consistent, been good. Um, and hey, he he likes and responds to my tweets sometimes. I made a dad joke one time, and he responded and he laughed. And I said, "Well, you know what? You are now my favorite caster, Pastry Time." So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gave a little me a sad. little bit of attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a little, <laughs> a little bit of attention on the show. You know, I said, uh, "Yeah." So I, I I'm pretty sad about it. But what do you guys? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? In regards to pastry time, like him and Hysterics are like two of the people who I, I see interact or well, interacting. Like if you send him a DM or something, they might reply. They really give time. I think he's one of the least offensive casters. Like mm -hmm. he does his job well enough. He does good cast most of the time. Like he doesn't like do a cast where like sometimes, for example, sometimes Freak does a cast where you're like, wow, that was a banger line. Like I'm glad you flamed X or Y team. And sometimes he does kind of like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? Like, and then sometimes he cast, talks about right? Oblivion Orb like he did this. Yeah, week. yeah, exactly, right? And I think that's the thing. I so only to go into a little speculation looking at his um twit longer as well as just like some of the sentiment around it, it almost feels like he's being pushed out of casting yeah not that yeah. he's choosing to retire which is to me really interesting to me because i think he's doing quite well but i think he's not doing superstar well right he's not captain flowers he's not kobe he's not even like a zale level but he's he's a glue character like whenever he's on a cast i know i can at least listen to it and be like not gonna be pissed off right or like not need to mute it and honestly, you need him to pair with like some of the newer people that you're trying out sometimes. And he does do a pretty good job. So if he's being pushed out, it does sound like he's getting another role in Riot. And they're trying to figure that out. So that's that's good, I guess. But it is really weird to me that Riot's pushing him away before. Like they have put some casters in place before that I didn't like for a while and give them more time. Well, like I think Pacer's done his job. Yeah. So maybe they're just trying to make more space for you know, more high level talent, maybe they're being ambitious, or maybe they just don't want to pay for more casters, right? And they think they can cut down. I don't know. I hope that it's not a drama reason. And, you know, they, he also was losing passion. And maybe that's why they decided they, they noticed that. But if, if not for that, I think it's a kind of a slight toward him, because I think he's been really good, like, for a long time. He's been like, tier two, but like a very solid rock in the scene. And I would hate to see him at least leave the like broadcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think Kevin wrapped it up pretty well. And this is going to be a bit of a meme answer. My favorite thing about him is just that one thing he brings that no one else brings is an accent. Yeah. Mm. And <laughs> like, I, I grew up around Europeans and like Aussies and like they, so like it, it make it me, at least to me, it makes it feel more, you know. I don't want to say personalized, but it makes me feel more like at home type thing. Because everywhere I went, like I was surrounded by that kind of thing, and he's the only one who really has an accent. And it kind of just, I, I just, I, I liked it. Yeah. So it's, it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna suck not having that, at least like to me personally. Aside from everything yeah. else that was already mentioned, of course. Sure. Yeah. I, I liked Pastry Time. I always felt, uh, I remember there was one episode where he subbed in on the dive, and then I realized that like when he's just talking normally, he's actually very knowledgeable about the game. And he's really chill, and he's very smart too. And I do feel like 
you know, maybe this is just a, a, a byproduct of the fans. Everybody's coming out of the woodwork saying they love Pastry Time, but I think he's just always been, you know, a little underrepresented, a little underappreciated throughout the years. We never really give him the credit, even mm-hmm. though he might have always deserved it. Because, yeah, everywhere I look, everybody is saying, wait, why? You're so good. Like, don't leave. But yeah. throughout the years, we actually don't really say that that much to him, right? Um, so I, I think this is just a byproduct of that kind of idea, which kind of sucks. You know, now I'm looking back and like, well, what if I just made it a 10 more random Reddit comments saying, damn, Pastry's casting was dope, you know, or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, Could have changed it. I don't know. But um. Yeah, I think he's really good. I think he's always been really chill. I think he's always actually been quite knowledgeable of the game when you do get to hear about it. I think, like, he just never... It felt like he never fit in, right? It does feel like LCS is a little clicky, right? We're considered to have the best casters and stuff. Like, the the like the like the whole grouping of, like, Kobe and Azale and Mark Z and Freak and Captain Flowers, they all felt like a tight-knit group. And it did feel like Pastry was kind of on the side. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe that's also a bit of that. Um, I will say though, like pastry time is a play by play. And so he's actually only, his job is only in competition with captain flowers and freak. So how well Kobe is ale and, uh, the other color analysts do doesn't really affect him except how they work together. So I think it's interesting. It does mean that rides bringing in another play by play cluster because you can't only have two, you need three. Um, so that'll be interesting. We're going to have a new, new face or new voice next year. Uh, if he's not on the cast, if Pastry Time is actually just legitimately retired from casting for LCS. So we're going to have someone new. Um, I don't know, man. It's just like, I, I like I get that Mark Z is like a color, but Mark Z is like 10 times worse than Pastry. <laughs> like it's just, yeah. Mark Z's casting is actual booty. <laughs> and then Pastry Time's casting goes from like pretty solid to sometimes absolutely amazing. So, I mean, I, I hope maybe, I hope that he's stepping down for his own reasons because he wants to pursue something else instead but yeah the, the the writing on the wall sounds like riot is pushing him out and wants someone new i would just Which, think that oh well man i i i hope they're not bringing in another caster because if they do it's like one you know how this community is if they don't already know him and th- if that person hasn't built like street cred yet like they're they're gonna you know butcher that caster i mean unless he's good I mean, yeah, Crafted but Flowers I mean, had no no growing. That's at all. true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. That that's why it'll be interesting if they do uh, bring somebody in. I think that'd just be. Also, I mean, we as NA, we've been complaining that our viewership is drawing dropping. Mm. This is clearly a response from Riot saying we need to change up the broadcast next year to have more viewership, and they're they're going for broke, right? They're going for the they're going for the big plays, right? They're making the big roster signing instead of improving their team what they have and sticking with it. So this is them saying we want to improve our our viewership. We want to improve our engagement. We want to make LCS more popular, right? They're using all of NA's at world sort of deal. Like you can clearly hear the sentiment from the casters is so NA dominant and we are so NA bias in our cast. Like this is, they're allowed to do that. Like that's what we're here for. Like um, I'm sure if we had uh, worlds in, another region right and we could hear like last year was in china if we could hear the chinese casters bet you they are all biased towards lpl teams when they're playing and i, I yeah i think it, i think it's pretty clear that ride's trying to make big moves to improve lcs engagement and viewership yeah. all right uh okay was there any closing thoughts you guys want to put out there before we wrap wrap the show up good yeah it, yeah go ahead well, okay. Well, this was just on a meta thing. Uh, Seraphine is interesting. Um, it got picked very early on in playoffs and, and, and play-ins, and then it got kind of disappeared. Seraphine, Seraphine was a massive pick in NA, and it was a pretty big pick in EU because of uh, G2 picking it um, with the seraphine Senna combo. Uh, I still think she's broken, but I imagine she might just f- completely fall out of the meta because... Um, I don't know. Teams are just gonna play it. Think it's not high, high, uh, fast pace enough. Um, I don't know. I still think you can, you can obviously play. It. I still think she's very, very broken. She hasn't been nerfed. She's one of the only enchanters that's like still a thing, and she's a multiplex champion. Um, I don't know. I think if like we see some bot lane that's like Kaisa and like an engaged support, you could do some real degen stuff with Seraphine and like either engaged support or another enchanter and like. 
I still think Enchanters are freaking broken. We're just, you know, pro players got bored and want to play Engage only, right? So, um, yeah. Serapine need the ratings. Should be played, but I, need the, I ratings. Need the Engage off. supports. Honestly, the one yeah. champ I don't think we're going to see, but I wish we, I hope we do see, especially now that um, Engage supports are back in the meta and he, we're lacking healing. You know who we should start picking? Tarek. Mm. Tarek. Oh, yeah, we could see Tarek. I mean, Callista Tarek is a thing. Uh, Nila, Nyla Tarek is a thing. We we know players really want to play Nila, even if it's not great. So we might yeah. see it. Tarek would be cool. I mean, he uh, he's, fine. he solves the enchanter problem, and he's not an enchanter. Well, he is an enchanter, but he's also like an engaged style. He's the front line you need, and he also applies yeah. the heal reduction and his ultimate. I mean, obviously his ultimate's not the best in pro play because teams are smart enough. So, oh, Tarek's hitting R. Let's just walk away in the, for the next two and a half seconds. Yeah, but I will say, right, Aatrox running at you with 7,000 move speed with a Terrac ulti, that sounds pretty terrifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so same with Hecarim. Uh, Hecarim is just like crazy with Terrac sometimes. Um, yeah, oh, uh, there's, God, I had so many things I wanted to bring up. So I'm just going to bring up two more things. Um, Belveth is real. We saw El Yoya play, and then we saw it get banned against him all the time. Belveth is very, very real champion. We're going to see it either banned or played. Showmaker is going to play it. Peanut's going to play it. I don't know who else, but I know those two players are for sure going to bring out the Belveth. I imagine a lot of LPL junglers are going to bring it out too. The champ's not balanced. Um, insanely, now that players are finally good enough at it, insanely fast clear speed. Insanely fast, just like maneuvering around in team fights and skirmishes. Like you think you got away from Belveth? No, you, you didn't. <laughs> she catches you. Um, I think that her damage reduction on her E is, like, so crazy. It's really, really strong, and it's really hard to play around because um, she gets on top of you, and you really want to get away from Belveth. But, like, as soon as she uses all of her cooldowns on her auto-attacking and dashes and stuff, and you want to retaliate after trying... Because, like, Belveth dashes onto you, right? And you're trying to fight her, but you need to dodge her W. So you're dancing around and, like, only half committing to a fight, dodging her W. But if you do dodge her W... And then you want to retaliate, she has her E. So it just makes it really hard for other melees to dual Belveth ever because of that sort of idea. Right? You have to dodge a W, and then you can't counter strike because she has her E, and you just have to run away. And she wins the trade, or you opt into a bad fight, stuff like that. So Champ's really, really strong. Uh, the last thing is Evan Shroud. I think Evan Shroud is, is kind of what's making the comeback for uh, engage supports really big. Um, the item is really, I think. It, it's like niche in a sense, but the niche is very common. And it's like you have an engaged support, you have burst on your team, and the enemy team has someone who's very tanky. So Aatrox, it's actually great into Aatrox, right? Aatrox, if you can one-shot him before he can do a bunch of healing, the 10% damage amp from Evan Shroud is very good. Something like Maokai, something like Hecarim, something like Silas, Trundle, whatever. All these bruisery, tanky champs, Evan Shroud is great into. Um, but I do think it's a bit overrated. Like, pro players are picking it too much, and I think the general community and personalities like LS and, like, what they're seeing on the co-stream highly underrate Ever Shroud, Evan Shroud, because, I mean, LS said it's the worst item in the game, and I'm just like, are you, oh, he's a are clown. you trolling? Are you <laughs> trolling, bro? Um, the item is, is quite good in those scenarios where you have burst, you have CC, and the enemy is tanky, and that happens almost every game. So, um, yeah, but... If you're on the side of you have a lot of sustain damage, right? Like you got like a Kogma or a Jinx or something, Locket's probably going to be the better way to go because living longer means more damage, means more lethal tempo, um, stuff like that. So it, it, it is an interesting, you know, adaptation that supports can make. Um, it does seem like everybody's just defaulting straight up for Evan Shroud every single game when they're playing Engage, and I don't think that's right, but it is very good though. Yeah, so that's that's my Evan Shroud talk. Yeah. Nice. Okay, Kevin. <laughs> thank uh, you, Professor. Alistair. Yeah. Thank yes. You, Professor. Uh, Anytime. My my point <laughs> is, I think that the banter game is getting a little better. Uh, Kaiser, I think, said something like, "I hope we play against EG. I would like to play against EG. They may actually be the weakest of the bunch." Laughs. Playing against NA would obviously be really fun as well, kicking them out. So mm -hmm. I'm getting Woo! you know very good. Like I just like that. I I don't mind that Kaiser said it. I don't. I also. Don't mind inspired talking shit about you. I hope I wish he didn't just talk shit about literally everything around him, but you know, that's his personality. And I'm just glad that there are personalities. Like it's fine if he's the villain in general. He is on EG for the for that um point. So 
it makes things spicier. I'm glad more pros are doing it, and I hope we see more. Because honestly, I think this trash talk does happen between Korea and LPL and stuff, but we usually just don't hear it. Or like we only get tidbits, right? Um, and when it's just between like an Asian team and an NA team or EU team, you just don't hear anything because they don't want to be disrespectful or like it not be translated poorly. It does get away come over sometimes, but it's not to the same level like they're the weakest of the bunch. We're gonna kick NA out. You've never heard a Korean team say that. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I hope. Maybe. We yeah. They ever probably did. say it in private every time, but <laughs> yeah. Or we heard it and everyone was just like, "Oh yeah, that's true," and then we forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that's gonna do do it for us. Uh, I can't wait. I uh, it starts Friday. Uh, it is what is it Wednesday? This episode will be out Thursday. So yeah, it's coming up. <laughs> we got we got lots of games ready to go, but. Uh, until next time, it's going to be fun. Uh, thanks again to my awesome co-hosts, Kevin Mitchell and Alistair, for always sharing their wise insights. Go uh, until next time, North America. Go North America. All right. Enjoy your all the three rest. of us are getting out of groups. That's right. All, all three NA teams. <laughs> all right. That's going to do it. Enjoy your climb on the rift. Try not to be too toxic. We'll see you all in the next episode. Peace.